It took me almost two years to finish this sketchbook, but I finally did it. And today we'll take a look at how my art evolved over that time. The first page is incredibly underwhelming because I left it blank on purpose, thinking I'd get back to it later, but I never did. So let's just quickly move on from that to the first official spread. And it's an orange themed one. What you should know about my sketchbooks is that I often like to give myself themes for spreads, which makes it more fun for me to fill them and also get rid of the indecision of what to draw next. So here, each of the little pictures has something orange in it. The next spread wasn't color themed, but it did have a common topic, city transport. I practiced drawing some vehicles, which I try to avoid otherwise, and didn't add a single plant, which is incredibly rare thing for my spreads. In fact, this is the one of the only two spreads in the entire sketchbook that has no kind of plant, flower, tree or leaf motif. This is like the polar opposite of the previous spread, a romantic theme with lots of flowers and the color violet. This painting is based on one of the still here, still life prompts over on Instagram. I fell in love with the bold colors and really wanted to give it a try in my style. So I got my gouache out and spent some quiet time rendering the food and pool water. The red hues then inspired the rest of the spread. Oh, and I'm pretty sure I covered something up with this piece of paper. Being happy with how my gouache session went in the previous spread, I decided I would give a try to another ambitious painting and try to paint one of the super cool photos from the IG account, Parisian Floors. At first I was enjoying the patterns a lot, but I quickly lost my patience and I think it shows. I didn't even finish some of the tiles. I don't know how I feel about this spread. It's not my least favorite one in the sketchbook. That one is coming, but I can't say I like it. But it's bound to happen. It's impossible to love every page in your sketchbook. I used this spread to commemorate a trip I took with my boyfriend to the Czech city of the Berets. They have these incredibly cool old time buildings with actual towers. And I mean like, how cool would it be to have a little studio or bedroom in a tower? This was the view from the window of the train and this was the food I ate there. And no, I can't draw plates. <laughs> I censored this one a bit because I don't trust YouTube. But this was the time I got myself these watercolor pens. I only had these six at first. I'm sorry, they are so dirty. I was experimenting with them and mixing various hues. I really like the greens and the reds, but the purple department leaves a lot to be desired. But that's why I got the magenta and cyan. I love these two. I think they're friends with completely opposite personalities. The lady, and don't get deceived by her cute outfit, is very cynical and down to earth, while the gentleman is an optimistic dreamer. And I just love to think of their friendship dynamic. This is one of my more Polish spreads, where I took my time with each of the pictures and rendered them properly. It's featuring over the garden wall characters, before I started working on this page, I just finished the book The Tunnel by Ernesto Sabato, which is set in Buenos Aires. So I opened Google and walked the streets to get the atmosphere of the city and I drew a couple of the buildings I liked. Now we're moving from the spring and summer themed spreads straight into fall. It was the end of summer and I was already in the autumn mood, so I opted to do this. Again, this is color themed in that I used the same marker throughout the whole spread. I loved drawing these house scenes. They're like my little comfort drawings. But now we're back to summer because I went on a little holiday to Spain in September and I wanted to take my sketchbook with me, but I didn't want to take too many art supplies. So I opted for taking these five gouache paints. All of these swatches were done by using these. This was also painted with them and the colors of this page were also done with these five. I think it turned out really well and it just shows that you don't have to have too many art supplies to create. You can really do a lot with a little. These were also done in Spain. I took my sketchbook with me to the beach and sketched the people there. And then when I got back to the accommodation, I painted it again using the five gouache paints I showed you. The right side was done when I got back home and it actually features the characters from The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Mayer. 
And it's Halloween! I did some spooky character designs and Gertrude, the grumpy witch, actually got a full illustration. This was a more freeform spread, where I did some watercolor mixing and some standard fineliner doodles. Now, this is an attempt at the Peachtober 2021 challenge by Furry Little Peach. I didn't want to do full illustration each day, so I opted for little drawings every day, combining some of the prompts. So this is tulip, this is smoke. Then I didn't feel like doing anything big for the clouds, so I just did these. This was hand, this was rice, this was fall, and so on. I continued with the Peachtober prompts here, but only got to the prompt 21, sun, and then didn't have time nor the energy to continue. This was also when I was watching Gilmore Girls for the very first time, so I had to include Rory in her Chilton uniform for the uniform prompt. Here I practiced drawing emotions and experimented with some shape overlapping. And here's a little winter spread. Honestly, to this day, this apple is the best thing I've ever painted with watercolors. I don't think I'll ever top that. What's fun to note is that we're halfway in the sketchbook and I managed to finish the first half in a little bit over half a year. But then it took me a year and two months to finish the rest of the sketchbook. I doodled this in one of my uni classes. I only had my trusty black fine liner with me, so that's why it's all black and white. I wasn't feeling too well back then. This red spread was kind of inspired by this super cute fruit sticker, so I concentrated on the color red being the main subject here, with some green complementary hues. This Slavic themed page was really fun. I did it as a printable for my patrons, and I actually recorded the process of this side of the spread for them. This yellow stain is not supposed to be there, but some of the cheaper alcohol markers, especially the red ones, tend to leave these when you close the sketchbook. They kind of transfer to the other page, and this one was transferred from the red dress. Now, this is when my sketchbook crisis hit me fully. I remember feeling like I lost the joy in drawing in my sketchbooks during this time, January slash February 2022. I had to concentrate on my uni exams, have been dealing with horrible eczema flare-up, now it looks way better. And that flare-up actually required two hospital stays. And on top of that, I was trying to keep my Patreon going and wanted to open my Etsy store for the very first time. So there wasn't much energy left to do the frequent sketchbook drawings as I used to. So there's quite a gap between these two spreads. I love how this one turned out though. I really like the overlapping and how full it feels. Even though individually I wouldn't consider the drawings my favorites, I think it works really well as a whole. And that's the beauty of sketchbook spreads. The obvious, I hope, theme for this spread was the color green and plants. I then turned this into a print for my Etsy store. I went to randomstreetview.com for this page and just drew whichever location I got, which is a really lovely landscape exercise to do in your sketchbooks. And you may remember this page from one of the shorts I posted here. This is probably my favorite spread in the entire sketchbook. I love how the composition flows, I like the bold colors, and it all came from this fruit sticker. I really like fruit stickers, which was the inspiration for the whole thing. I loved the vibrant blue, and here I was trying to find the closest match of the markers I own, but then I kind of ended up using all of them. I used to hate drawing shoes, but then I did these rotation studies, really trying to understand this particular shoe and something just clicked for me. Ever since then, I've been enjoying drawing shoes, which shows that doing studies really helps. So not always. Are you ready to see the spread I hate the most from the entire sketchbook? I know exactly what went wrong here. It's the fact that I forced myself to do figure studies from stock photos, which are great, but I find trying to draw a pose from a stock reference incredibly boring. And that then shows on the drawing, because I rush them and make mistakes and don't care about them and overall just become frustrated in the process. I really hate these. This was turned into another printable for my patrons. And I actually used it 
as a cover for this little handbound notebook. I shared a tutorial on how to do this with my patrons, but it's super easy, super straightforward. Here I did the three random markers challenge and my picks were certainly not something I'd choose myself. The first one was quite lucky because of the complementary blue and orange, but then it went downhill quickly. These three had no contrast at all and I just disliked this color combination, but then I found out that layering them kind of makes a skin tone, so I used that. I read somewhere that making notes next to your sketches helps you improve. This lasted me exactly this one spread and then I gave up on it. I don't know if it helped, but I just didn't feel like continue doing it. Also, I'm still super bad at drawing symmetrical objects, so I did some practice for that. It's funny that I don't mind drawing one object several times, but give me one post stock photo and I just can't. Yet again, it was Halloween slash November time, aka the only time of the year when my color palette gets darker and moody and the subjects I draw are spooky. You may remember this chapel from my autumn video and this lettering was actually done for a December piece. I just put it there because there was space that needed to be filled. This was a testing spread. I got my first ever Posca marker, so I drew this winter lady with it. And then I was trying out how my water-based markers react with water for that sweet, sweet watercolor effect. I got a lovely mail from Mirte, aka Sunflower Winters on IG, and it had these cute stamps on it. And I love the color schemes of them so much that I drew a whole spread of winter activities inspired by them. It truly only takes a little to get an idea for a spread. Here I tried oil pastels for the very first time. They probably won't be my favorite medium, but it was fun to experiment with them. This whole spread was inspired by this old woman. I then thought of Slavic countryside and the page basically filled itself. These are all my comfort drawings. People, landscapes, house, chickens, and of course, plants and flowers. I did this spread for the Artist Diaries Week Challenge by Magali Franov and Emily Thatcher. There were seven prompts, one for each day of the week, and I decided to put them into one composition. I didn't really care about the result here. I just documented whatever the prompt told me to, and that was very liberating. This is the last full spread and the second spread in the entire sketchbook that features no plants, flowers or trees, nothing flora related. And coincidentally, it also happens to be city themed as the first one. Comparing these two, I think the new one is more relaxed. It has this energy to it, especially this drawing. That's definitely something I'd like to do more of in my next sketchbook. And speaking of my next sketchbook, I actually already started it. It's big compared to the old one. If this video inspired you to start a new sketchbook, which would honestly make me incredibly happy, I recorded the process of starting mine and shared tips on how to conquer the fear of the blank page. So if you're about to dive into a new notebook, go watch that next and we can do it together.